Good afternoon, folks. Welcome back to the channel. We're here for the starting 11 prediction for tomorrow's Scottish Cup semi final at Hamden against Rangers. It's the biggest game of the season because it's the next game. Um, we are very close to achieving big things, and it's a huge game with a lot riding on it. We come into it off the back of that one each draw against Motherwell last weekend that wasn't our best performance of the season. We have been missing some key players in the last few weeks and I think that finally paid for us. Um, last week I think it just caught up with us a wee bit but we're a wee bit below par um, and as I say missing some players particularly creatively um, in order to sort of break Marlow down. They had a good performance, um, a good result for them but we you just felt that we weren't really at um, our top level at any point in the game last weekend so that is something we'll need to address tomorrow. Rangers come into it off the back of a 2-0 defeat at Pataudry. It's been a long time since both teams come into one of these games um, with neither winning the week before or in the game before. Um, I, I watched the Rangers game last weekend. I don't watch them a lot um, across 90 minutes, but um, it was a poor performance last week, even though they had chances. They're missing some players as well. Um, I think if you go back to that 3-2 game, um, they did stifle us in the first half. Their shape... It, their shape when we had the ball was quite good in terms of restricting us for building the play out for the back. But um, I think we've got to just be a bit sharper um, in possession uh, tomorrow, a bit quicker. And to be fair, um, they didn't really hurt us when they had the ball too often in that 3-2 game at Celtic Park. Their big threat was from set pieces. We talked about everything from the 3-2 game um, and everything preview in this game in the preview show. Uh, that was up on Wednesday. I'll link it at the end if you haven't seen it. Myself and Callum talked through everything um, in detail, so you can go and watch that video if you haven't already. But we're here to talk purely about the starting 11. Um, a lot of things to be decided. As I say, we've been missing some key players. Hatate, Jota and Abada have all been missing um, for numerous weeks now. Ange Postacoglu did confirm yesterday that they all trained. Everybody is buzzing with that. Um, it's good news. I think we were starting to fear last weekend, particularly with the likes of Hatati um, and Abada, who's been out for even longer than him, um, that they weren't going to make it. But Abada, less so. But Hatati and Jota look like they're really in contention and they are huge boosts for us. So we'll start in goals. Um, as we always do with Joe Hart, I don't think there'll be any change to the back five, I think it'll be Johnston, Carter Vickers and Starfield and Taylor at left back. Um, I think defensively, obviously, we lost that goal to, to Mullerwell last week. Kind of on the counter-attack, I think it was it was maybe poor positionally for Greg Taylor and that's been unlike him because he's been absolutely exceptional all season. Um, potentially in my shout for, for player of the year um, if there wasn't so many other good performers uh, around him. Maybe most improved player. Uh, I think Greg Taylor would run away with that award this season. Um, but I think that'll be the back four. In midfield, I think Callum Gregg will play in the deeper position. And after saying during the week in the previous show, I'm sure if you watched it, you'll have heard us saying this, that you can't throw Rio Hatate back in after five weeks out to start in this game. But you've got to throw Rio Hatate in because it's Rio Hatate and he's been so instrumental for us this season. Um, I think the best bet is to put him in the starting 11. I think he's trained most of this week um, and try and get a good 60 minutes out of him. Um, we want to start the game strong. The start in these games is always key, particularly for this Celtic side, I think. In a lot of these derbies, um, you've seen us start really fast and take control of the game, get the first goal, um, and that's key in these games. I think that the game at Celtic Park, the 3-2 game, a few weeks back, we didn't really get that fast start. We still took the lead. We still got the first goal 25 minutes in. But as I say, there wasn't that that real speed to our play. And we never pinned Rangers back the way we have done at times in these games. And I think Hatati not being involved was a factor in that. Because, as I say, Rangers' shape was, was restricting the ball, getting into Callum McGregor and helping us build. But Hatati gives you a different option. Um, and if, if you go back to the cup final... Um, at Hamden against Rangers Hatati was key in getting us out um, it, it, Rangers couldn't really live with him, he was picking up spaces where they couldn't track him, nobody knew who was who was supposed to be picking him up um, and he kept finding these pockets of space and he really hurt Rangers in both goals that day I think he's an absolutely vital cog in this Celtic team and I think he's got to start 
Um, I know he won't be at full, um, full match sharpness, but as I say, if we can get 55, 60 good minutes out of him, we'll have plenty of options on the bench. I think alongside him, it will be Matt O'Reilly. Um, that's the sort of natural midfield three that if you go back to the start of the season, everyone would have said that's the first choice three. Um, Aaron Moyes obviously interrupted that this season with his brilliant form. But again, in that 3-2 game, he was lacking sharpness and it really showed and he put in a poor performance that day. Um, I think O'Reilly will get the nod. I think Moy off the bench as an option for us. Awata off the bench as an option for us. Uh, he really helped us in that 3-2 game um, come, off, come off the bench at 1-1 at and he really helped us take control of midfield. Um, as I say, like Hatati, he, he gives the, the centre-halves, Carter Vickers, Starfield, he gives them better angles um, in terms of pulling away and making space um, to, to help us get the ball into midfield and, and out wide. So he's an option as well, and you could say that he's maybe hard done to. Uh, I think if Ange does decide that it's too soon for Hatati, Iwata will be the player that gets an odd. McGregor will move up one, um, and he'll play in a deep position the way we've seen in the last couple of weeks against Kilmarnock, against Mullerwell. But as I say, I think the speed through midfield um, was a factor last weekend against Muller as well. And Hatati is such a key player for us in terms of linking um, defence and attack. So I think that will be the midfield three. I think on the right-hand side, we'll see another key player returning, Jota. What a season he's had. Um, I, I, I somehow feel he won't be at the forefront of everybody's minds for player of the year because of the likes of Kyogo, the likes of Hatati. But he's definitely in there. Um, he started the season like a house on fire. Um, he's got 11 goals, 10 assists. Um, he's so exciting, brilliant to watch. Um, he's also the only Celtic player that's been in the brazen head this season. Um, <laughs> absolutely mental. I couldn't believe that when I seen it on Twitter the other day. Um, in the brazen head with a double denim and the original Bumblebee on. Um, <laughs> what a character, uh, but what a player and what a boost for us to have him back. I think he'll start on the right-hand side. And I think Dyson may double play on the left. Um, as I say, I think it's too soon for Abada to start. Um, I think even if Abada was fit, he wouldn't start in the game. He's going to be an option off the bench for us. I don't think Haksabanovic has done enough in the last couple of weeks to, to stake his claim to start here. Um, he's played on the right-hand side a lot, which I don't think helps him, but um, he hasn't been near that level we've seen when he's been an impact sub this season. Um, I think he really had to put in two excellent performances against Kilmarnock and against Mullerwell for the manager to go, do you know what? He deserves his place ahead of Maeda um, or ahead of Jota in a game like this. Um, we know that Maeda's work rate in this game um, has been so important for us in the past. I think Ange rates him really highly in terms of his impact and his influence in this team. So I think there's, there's no danger that Maeda won't start. And I think, obviously, it's only going to be Kyogo through the middle. Um, 29 goals, uh, stuck on 29 goals since his opener against Kilmarnock the other week. Um, he can become the first Celtic player to score 30 since 2015-16 Lee Griffiths. Uh, a great opportunity for him. Five goals against Rangers in his last three appearances. Um, I think the overall record in one season is Henrik Larsson with seven against them. If Kyogo can score seven or more against them this season, we've still got two games left. The game tomorrow and the game at Ibrox uh, after the split, where we might even have wrapped up the title by then. Um, but a great opportunity for him. And as I say, to put himself uh, further into those conversations about who is the best since Larson. Um, I expect another big performance from the team and a big performance from him as well tomorrow. Um as we've seen in the cup final, if we get supply to him, if the team is playing um, to its level and we can get down the size and we get service into Kyogo, he will put the chances away. Um, we've got to start the game better than we did at Celtic Park a few weeks ago. We've got to play to a higher level, much higher level than we did against Mullerwell last weekend. But hopefully with these players back, we get that boost. Um, I expect it to be a brilliant atmosphere. Um, and the last time we played them at Hamden in the cup final, I thought the players dealt with the occasion brilliantly. They dealt with the pressure. They played the way they were supposed to play. They were all brave on the ball. They knew they knew their responsibilities. Um, and I think they carried their jobs out to a tee. Um, people maybe expected the, the scoreline to be more comfortable in the end after going up 2-0. Um, but I thought that performance was really good that day. And I think a similar performance tomorrow where we can deal with the pressure, deal with the ball, and everybody does their jobs. 
Um, if we play to our level, we can win the game and that will put us in a great position to complete an eighth domestic treble. There you go, that's the team I think the manager will pick tomorrow. I can't wait for the game. Um, wherever you're watching it around the world, enjoy it. Like this video, comment with your own thoughts on the team below. Who do you think will start? Do you think it's too soon for Hatati or Jota or would you put them straight in um, as I think Ange Postacoglu might? Please don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and we'll see you tomorrow after the game, hopefully celebrating another Celtic victory. Cheers. Thank <laughs> you.